Joining us tonight, the first person to focus on and raise questions about the Uranium One deal and to detail the large sums of money that Bill and Hillary Clinton received either directly or through their foundation from Russian officials while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. With us tonight, Peter Schweizer, he's president of the Government Accountability Institute, also executive producer of the Clinton Cash uh, movie, which is based on his best-selling book. And it is great to see you, Peter. And uh, you have to feel, I would think, um, somewhat uh, a, a sense of uh, uh, a gratifying uh, sense in watching this uh, begin to uh, become a, a, an investigation as we hear from the Senate Judiciary Committee what they're focusing on. Yeah, well, first of all, it's great to be back on with you, Lou. Um, yeah, it's been a, a very interesting emotional ride. You know, the book came out in 2015. Uh, the New York Times confirmed uh, the uranium story in a front-page story. Right. Uh, we expected that to sort of set off all sorts of government investigations. It did set off an FBI investigation. Uh, but basically, the story has been dormant uh, for two years as far as any kind of official action. Right. Uh, and now you have this great reporting that's been done uh, that this informant uh, was aware of all kinds of activities. Uh, it's been a very interesting emotional ride, but just grateful and thankful that this issue now seems like it's finally going to get the airing that it deserves on Capitol Hill. I, I will tell you and, and, our, and our viewers, uh, I thought that the FBI would step in immediately based on what was uh, put forward. And, and then suddenly the focus was uh, purely the email scandal, which to me, proportionately yeah. and in weight uh, uh, in the national security interest, look to be the ancillary story, your story about the Clinton Foundation, an obvious pay-for-play scandal, quid pro quos that could be established, which you did establish, uh, and put into your uh, book, your movie, uh, in the reporting of the New York Times that, uh, uh, with which you worked. I, I mean, and the, and the FBI just went absolutely radio silent. Well, you're right, Lou. Um, you know, I can say that the field offices were very engaged. I mean, I had multiple meetings. I really can't right. go into detail, but sure. I had multiple meetings over the course of uh, 18 months. Uh, I know that they were investigating uh, corruption at the Clinton Foundation, pay to play. Uh, but it became pretty clear, uh, and some of this has been reported by the Wall Street Journal, uh, mm -hmm. that they were stopped by Department of Justice prosecutors, that they wanted subpoenas, they wanted further investigatory powers. Those were not granted by by the Obama Justice Department. And then, of course, hope turned that when uh, Trump came in, Jeff Sessions is attorney general, that that might change. But, you know, Lou, we have kind of the same cast of characters in a lot of positions, yeah. uh, senior positions at the Department of Justice, uh, and that has not changed. So what I would say is my experience is the field offices in the FBI very aggressively wanted to pursue this, but they've yeah. run into resistance in Washington, D.C. And, you know, you and I have talked about uh, the, the scandal, the Clinton scandal yeah. and the refusal of the FBI, specifically the fired former director of the FBI, James Comey, and his absolute obstinance, even faced with overwhelming evidence and the field office agents who are urging uh, uh, investigation and prosecution. Uh, as, as we looked at it, uh, there was almost no way, it seemed at various points, that the FBI would not investigate. But now we learn that an informant was, uh, was also blocked and with criminal penalties, not civil penalties, which is the normal and the, the only uh, penalty new, uh, usually attached to a non-disclosure agreement. They used that to absolutely stifle him uh, to uh, suffocate this story and I'm talking about with the Clinton Foundation and Rosatom and Uranium One uh, for four years. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the thing, Lou, that people have to understand. This process, this CFIUS <clears throat> process, where the federal government approves these types of deals that have national security implications and involve foreign entities or foreign governments, it's precisely set up so that federal authorities can determine, is this foreign government or this foreign company, are they involved in criminal activity? Are they involved in espionage? Do they have nefarious motives? 
This whistleblower, this FBI investigation was going on at exactly this time right. in 2010 when they were investigating it, and yet the, apparently the evidence is nobody on CFIUS ever even heard about this investigation. They finally prosecuted the individual in 2014. So the entire process broke down, and there's only two possible explanations, Lou. Rank incompetence at the highest levels of the FBI or the Department of Justice, which sits on CFIUS, or right. something more nefarious was going on. I don't know which one, but either one of them is really bad, and we need to get to the bottom of it. And, and to think that nothing has been done to this point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. we're going to be talking uh, uh, with uh, Victoria Tansing uh, Monday, the attorney uh, for this unnamed, uh, undisclosed uh, informant, uh, and learn more. But that CFIUS, uh, the, the Committee for, the, for Investment in the United States, is comprised of, amongst others, the Homeland Security Council, the, uh, the National yes. Security Council, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Treasury, the Secretary of Homeland Security. There is no force, just, there is just no imaginable way in which one of those entities or individuals would not be aware of that investigation unless, yes. unless something very crooked uh, and very much a cover-up was occurring. Uh, and, and do you have confidence that we're going to see that reverse now? Well, I don't know. I certainly hope so. And look, to put this in a context that people fully understand, here's the implications of this. The Russians got 20% of U.S. uranium. Rosatom now controls it. Part of the agreement in allowing them to take over the uranium, Lou, was that they would not export the uranium because we don't want this to end up in bad hands in North Korea with mm -hmm. terrorists, with Iran. The New York Times confirmed in its reporting on this that they have violated that agreement. Yellow cake under the control of Uranium One has been exported out of the United States, and it's unclear where it's actually gone. So this is not about a far-off scandal. This is not just about the Clintons. This has enormous national security implications for the United States, and we do need to get to the bottom of it. The only way I think it's going to happen is with Senator Grassley's committee in Capitol Hill cracking heads and saying, we demand answers, and if you don't give us answers, heads have to roll.